All right, so how close can I get? So you can kind of—I don't know if you can see. You're like framed yeah, up right here. I'll just try to sit uh, even with you or whatever you do. Do that. Does that work? Yeah. That's good. What's up, guys? I am really excited about today's video. It's an interview with Morgan Wallen, who's someone I've been intrigued by for a while and kind of taken a second look at. And um, I know is one of the favorite artists of so many of you guys down in the comments as well. Morgan and I got to sit down before a show he recently played, opening for Jason Aldean here in Charlottesville, Virginia, and we had a great chat. I would say it's a pretty basic interview because I felt like I still didn't know just the basics of Morgan's life, so I asked him some pretty basic questions, but we get into some conversation, we get him talking about uh, kind of his upbringing, we talk a lot about uh, the Jason Isbell cover of Cover Me Up near the end there. So things that I thought were especially interesting about the interview were his comments on appearing on the show The Voice. I also enjoyed when he talked about his friendship with Hardy. And we also talked a little bit about my evolving perspective as a country fan that has always been sort of a genre purist and how that's sort of been morphing as I've kind of delved deep in this YouTube world. And as he's got a big collaboration with this pop producer Diplo, he had some thoughts on the matter. I just think there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Overall, I really appreciated how self-aware Morgan was of kind of his place in the industry, of the idea of genre, and of what kind of his long-term plans are for building a career. I enjoyed getting to know him. I think you will too, especially if he's someone that you already enjoy and want to know a little bit more about. Now, I will say the production quality of this video is not perfect. Much like when I interviewed Zach Bryan and it looked like I filmed it on a potato, um, or when I interviewed Kip Moore and had a light strobing problem. This time, for a series of circumstances, we ended up backstage. And it sounds like we're backstage. It sounds like there is some... Uh, guitar tuning happening, some drums getting hit, but just think of it as beautiful ambiance of the backstage experience uh, before a big arena show with Jason Aldean about to play. Overall, I think I've saved the audio and it's not a big deal, but I did just want to say that. I'm not going to sit here and beat myself up about it. I worked my ass off to get this interview, and even though I have a studio, I have nice mics, um, I have all that ready to go if ever one day someone wants to get interviewed in there. For now, I'm just making it work where I can with the equipment I can, and I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm just going to say this is a reason to do a better version down the road in the future. So we'll get into the interview now. I know it's a longer video for me, but I think that's pretty cool. You can click around in the description to different sort of timestamps of where we're talking about different stuff. Uh, if you like this video, if you share it with a Morgan Wallen fan in your life, I'd really appreciate that. It helps grow the channel. And with that said, go into this with an open mind and enjoy the interview. All right, here backstage with Morgan Wallen. Is there going to be bad sound? Yes. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be okay. This well, is just, we're learning. We tried to do it on my bus, and apparently my bus is not capable of being interviewed on because my generator didn't want to leave the lights on. You know, it looked like we had a ghost in there, so. <laughs> it's true, but we're making it work. Um, okay, so one of the, like, I feel like I could ask you a million like really obvious questions, and maybe some of them for someone that gets interviewed all the time will feel really obvious. Hopefully, they don't. But I, I feel like I know just the bare bones, most basic stuff of like your upbringing. You know, the Wikipedia version of it. But yeah. you, you, you were born, as I understand it, in Sneedville, Tennessee, but really like consider Knoxville home. Yeah. Kind of, okay. kind of both, but like Knoxville is what I consider my hometown just because I kind of got my bread and butter there, you know. I moved there when I was going into high school, I think right before high school, and, and kind of spent, you know, ten, 10 years, something like that before I moved to Nashville. Spent 10 years there, so my family's there now, and a lot of people I love, so I consider that home. All right. Um, do you have siblings? Yeah, I got two little sisters, yeah. How do they feel about, like, you know, do they enjoy the, the yeah, limelight yeah. of your... They do, man. They've, they've uh, my whole family as a whole have... have uh, really just been so so supportive of me from from the early days man like they never they never made me feel stupid or crazy for for doing this and that's something i really really appreciate sisters included why why didn't they i don't know i don't know <laughs> man it's a good question because i you know i kind of thought i was crazy myself so i don't know man I, I think that they believed in me and you know from from me sitting in the in the garage writing terrible songs on on a workout bench that was in my garage, I think. I don't know, they saw something in me, and I, I'm, I'm glad they did. Did you have the angst of a pastor's kid? Of yeah. Of a PK? No, I definitely did. I definitely did. Um, especially during, like, high school, um, I really, really wanted to rebel real bad, you know, like, just to <laughs> go against everything that I that I ever knew. So I kind of did, man. I kind of did that for, you know, four or five years, and 
got that out of my system, I guess. And got then, this. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, this is a <laughs> couple cigarettes on the <laughs> houseboat, I think. Um, yeah. Did man. you live in a houseboat? No, no, no. My, one of my buddies had one, and there was some some times on there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's lucky we're not. Somebody didn't die. But uh, yeah, man, I, I think I went through that for sure. I know I went through that for sure, and then kind of went, you know, kind of returned to to the things that I was brought up on and and believe and. Um, became you know good friends with my, my parents and stuff again so <laughs> <laughs> I think they might have hated me for a couple of years what was the role of baseball in your life it was big man I think you know I I started playing when I was four I think started playing t-ball my, my mom always told me that I was a, I, when I was a kid it was I never played with toys I, it was either some sort of instrument or, or or some sort of sport never really any toys and that's just what that those were my two things that I loved I love music and I love sports and Baseball just, I guess, happened to be the one that was, the, the I guess, I showed the most interest for, and that's what my parents put me in. And I, you know, I, I played it all the way, all the way up till the end of high school, and um, played travel ball and all that stuff, you know, all, all the time. And I was supposed to go play in college, and ended up getting hurt, and that's kind of when I wouldn't say turn to music, but I kind of, you know, I that was my outlet during that time. Music, that's when I really started to play, play again, and. Like I, that's when I learned guitar. I'm still not the greatest guitar player, but that's when I, you know, my dad gave me a guitar and I went to Walmart and bought a chord chart and I just started hacking on it. <laughs> and uh, you know, baseball kind of just, I don't know, it, it was it was a, hu a huge part in my life, you know, especially for me. I, I was actually homeschooled as a kid up until high school. Really? Yeah. Were you awkward as a freshman? No, I was not because I think baseball helped with that. Okay. I was always around somebody. I was with a child. Yes, you would think I would have been. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't mind being homeschooled, but I always kind of was like. I don't really want to be homeschooled but my mom believe it or not I was really smart as a kid <laughs> and uh, I don't know what happened but my mom took me out of took me out of kindergarten because I already I already knew everything that was going on so I, I didn't pay attention and I was just raising hell the whole time so she took me out and taught me herself and she was already a certified teacher she had her degree so okay were you were you like so you know how homeschool kids do like debate league and stuff did you do any of that stuff no debate league <laughs> I did 4-H I wrote speeches really yeah, I did good at speeches. Interesting. Um, I, forgot, I almost forgot about that until you asked that question. But yeah, I did that. Um, what was? Do you remember the topic of your like defining your crown jewel speech? I, I do not. I barely remember. <laughs> I did it. Uh, I wish I did remember. I, was, I wonder if there's any way we can access that. But no, I don't remember. But it was it fascinating. Was, yeah, it was cool, man. So I don't think I really like know the genesis moment. I guess you just said like. You know, you were musical a little bit growing up, and then when you got hurt, um, that you kind of found music again. But do you remember, like, the was there a moment where you said, "I want to be a musician. I want to be a performer." Well, I mean, in an exact moment, no. I, I, I think it was definitely during that time, though. Whenever I, whenever I was, you know, I was hurting and I was writing songs to not think about that. I think I realized how much music meant to me, and I was like. I would love to be able to do this for a living. I think it was just somewhere in those in those moments, in those couple months. So then what were the stepping stones to go from, I'm enjoying writing songs to, I'm going to do this in front of other people? Yeah, well, mostly, I'd, I'd done it at church growing up, so I'd, I'd already had a little bit of it, you know? If you could cancel one church song, what would you cancel? One is there one song? that you just, I hate How Great Is Our God. It is like my least favorite song. I know it's very popular, but I'm just, I've had enough of it. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, man, I I, actually, I love contemporary Christian music, but I like I really love like old hymns. Okay, okay, that's, okay. Like, that's like my favorite kind of Christian music or gospel, I guess you would say. I, I love that. So I don't, I don't know a bunch of like contemporary Christian music songs. Okay, um, but you've done it a little growing up. You said performing, and then you know freshman in college, hurt writing songs. What like kind of is the is the the next step from there? Yeah, um, man, I I actually I was just kind of you know singing and I actually went to a community college for a year or a semester and didn't know what I was doing so I dropped out and went back home and that's when I you know kept on writing songs and stuff and my mom signed me up for the voice and uh your mom signed mom you did. up I didn't even know I never even heard of it before how does someone do that with, with without you knowing I don't know she just put my name I don't know exactly but she did <laughs> And uh, she knows everything about me. I mean, she, it's probably pretty easy for her to put all my information in. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But um, and she uh, she said, you know, I think the, this would be good. And I was like, I, I mean, all right, I don't know what it is. So I, like, watched a couple episodes. I was like, I guess, you know. And uh, 
ended up, you know, get, making it through. She drove me to St. Louis, too. That's where we tried out and uh, made it through a couple different rounds. What's the tryout process like? Because I feel like people know the idol process. Well, yeah, well. Because you see it on TV, but yeah. you don't really know how people end up in L.A. I know. doing The Voice. Well, there's it's different for different people. Like, some people that were on The Voice, they, they, contact, they contacted them. Mm -hmm. And was like, you can just skip all that other stuff and just come on here, you know. But for me, I, no, I didn't have any. I didn't have anything going on. You know, like I don't even think I had a YouTube video or anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, "Good luck." But I went. I, she drove me to St. Louis, and we tried out. Um, I was in a room. Like it was a, it was in an arena, and there was all kinds of people. I don't know exactly how many. Um, but I went into a room with probably like twenty or thirty people, and mm -hmm. like a, a mm -hmm. few different like judges or whatever. And I think you got like a verse and a chorus. And, I did mine, and they, they asked. I think I was the only one they said. What did you sing? I don't remember. <laughs> um, what did I sing? I don't remember, man. Um, <laughs> I think I was thinking so I, random. I, it's this all whole so thing that you ended up on the floor. It's so random, bro. I've never seen the show before. <laughs> and, uh, I sang, and the, the dude was like, Morgan Wallen, can you stay for a second? I'm like, yeah. So I was like, everybody else left the room, and I stayed. And I'm like, well, we, we like you, man. We think you, you know, you're. Clearly raw and don't really know what you're doing, but we like you, you know. And uh, so I, I came, I think I, yeah, I went back to St. Louis and did an audition like in an actual studio. Made it through that, and then they sent you to LA to do an executive audition, I think is what they called it. And I sang, sang, sang a couple songs, and then after that, they called me and said, All right, you made it to the blind auditions. And then once you make it to the blind auditions, you don't know if you're actually going to get to try it or not because the teams might fill up before you get a chance. Interesting. And is Which there sucks. like a certain ranking where you like low in the? Bro, I was like last. <laughs> I'm talking about. That's interesting. There was, there was two. There was two spots left when I when I went, and <laughs> Secure and Usher were the only one with spots, and they both turned around. So at least I got that to say. But um, everybody's like, well, "Why don't Why didn't Blake pick you and stuff?" Like he got me. It's David Boy. It ain't his fault, you know, because they don't always show it that way. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. On the TV either. So like the people don't know when you try it out. You know what I mean? They think it's mm -hmm. like all all in order, but it's not. So. Ended up on Usher's team, hated it. <laughs> hated pretty much a lot of it, a, a lot of it. Yeah, I was gonna ask like, uh, being part of the machine of like the well, voice and going out to LA. Like, did you, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna ask like, was that a real fish out of? I mean, clearly they're gonna cast you as like, look at this fish out of water guy being part of this like big show. And they dressed like, me like it and everything. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, man. Like. I've always loved country music, but I've also I've always loved all kinds of music, mm -hmm. and I have a voice like to where it's not like I can sing other stuff that's not country. So they wanted me to sing pop music, so they got me dressed like I don't even know what I'm I don't even know singing a pop song. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I'm very fish out of water. I don't know what's going on. You you hear all these people, you know, these big wigs, and I've never even been on a plane before the show. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't really I don't know anything. I'm so naive to all this stuff, you know. And I I I, I go in there and they're like. You know, we we want you to do this and do that. And when all these people are like telling you, like, well, maybe that's what I should do. I don't want to do that, but maybe that's what right. I should do, you know. As a kid, I mean, I'm basically a kid. And um, and I did. I listened to them, and it clearly was the wrong thing. But now, looking back, I'm really, really thankful that, that it didn't work out because, I, you know, I, I made it to, like, the top 20, and I finally sang a country song. And that's when I got kicked off singing a country song. And uh, <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. And, uh, you know, I, but I got... I, I'm not mad at them for that. They were probably doing what they thought that I that they were going to make the most money off of. I'm right, sure. I'm, right. Why were they not? Right. They weren't trying to ruin my life or anything. I know that. But um, did you go into the experience with like? A, I did not expect to win. But did you go into just going and being part of the show? Like, just how long were you out in LA? Bro, it was wild, man. Like, and, and we we sometimes we go for like a week, two weeks. Probably like two weeks would be the, the least amount of time we'd ever go out there, and then we go home. Was there something you learned? There was like learned? a couple months I was out there at one, for like straight, a couple wow. months straight. Was there something you learned being out there that you wouldn't have expected you'd like take away from being out on the West Coast? Uh, I think just mostly just how TV works. I think I learned a lot, really? a lot about that. Yeah. Is it like this? Especially Is it like, like this uh, grand yeah. setup here? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. There's a couple more, a couple more bucks than we put into this, but man, it's... It's it's interesting how how they how it truly is a TV show. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's what it's about. Like you, you if you look and like, if you go look at like the top twelve, I'm not sure if it's the same. I've not I've not watched the show before or after. Yeah. And you you look at the top twelve. There's like the this guy he fits in this. You know he's like the the big black guy. Then they got like the, oh, yeah. the white guy. Then they got like yes. the, you know the, the the guy with the beard. And then they yeah. got the girl. You know. Look, I love Scotty and Lauren um, from their season of Idol, but like. 
it's very clear when the producers have their narrative. And for them that year, it was like the two teen country stars. <laughs> yeah, and like, no matter how good anyone else sang, they're like, mm, you just weren't. <laughs> You weren't, weren't at Scotty, Scotty or Lawrence. Scotty Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is so unfair. It is unfair, dude. But, I mean, you got to know that when you're getting into a mm-hmm. TV show. And I, I kind of did, but I, it was just really interesting to me to, to kind of see the extent of it all, man. But it was, you know, overall, I met some great people, and I, and I got to got to connect with people through the show. And that's that's what was the most important part, part for me. You know, a couple of people I, I, I noticed me because of because of being on there. So that's like actually segues perfectly into what I wanted to ask, which is like at some point you and Florida Georgia Line like linked up. Seems like they kind of took you under their wing and you kind of ended up in their crew, for lack of a better term. Yeah, for a little while, yeah. Um, ha- was that from them seeing you on The Voice? Was that from you? No, just- it wasn't. Um, it was I, I ended up meeting a couple guys. and I met this guy in Knoxville, actually, me and him. I went back from the, the voice that we had. We went, got to go home for like a month, and they said, while you're home, take some voice lessons. You know, they told everybody just to, like, keep their voice up and all that, you know, whatever. And so I went and found a dude, and he was like this rock guy. I used to be in a, in a rock, like an active rock band. And I was like, everybody else was like all these classical people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go in there and do that. So I met this guy. His name's Sergio Sanchez, and we started uh, writing songs together. And um, he, he knew people from being signed in that band. And, I see. And I met a couple people through that, and those are my former managers. I'm, not, I'm no longer with them, but um, I, through them, I met uh, a guy named Seth England, who, mm-hmm. is, who is my manager now, and who is uh, also the lab, my, my label president and a partner in it. And um, he is the guy. He's a, he also was. He's no longer, but he he was Florida Georgia Lions manager too. Right. And. Um, he, man, he, I, I literally sent him a demo. And a guy named Kevin Neal, too. I can't forget Kevin. Um, Kevin Neal is, uh, was a booking agent at, at WME, and he is actually the first person that I met in Nashville. I w- went into his office and played a couple songs on the guitar, and he was like, man, I think I want to help you out, but you're going to have to move down here. So I was like, all right, I'll move down here. And I moved down there and like had a few demos and stuff, and he sent them. I wasn't looking for a record deal at all. I was just looking to, to write with other people. I was trying to get better at songwriting because I had not been writing that long. So I wanted to, you know, learn from people that I appreciated and, and looked up to and stuff. And I sent it to, he sent some demos to Big Loud, and Seth was like, who is this kid? Is he, like, he's just trying to be a songwriter? And Kevin was like, I mean, no, he wants to record deal, you know, eventually. He's just trying mm-hmm. to get better songs. Mm-hmm. And Seth was like, bring him in. So I, I went in and uh, played for him, Joey, and Craig, Joey Moy and Craig Wiseman. And... Uh, Man, I don't know. Just from the very minute we met, they kind of—I just felt like they got me and they understood what I was trying to do. And I went back the next week and played for the whole staff in like a conference room thing, a miserable type setting, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, like you got to do. And uh, man, it was great. And they—they they just kind of just—I've never—I didn't never take another meeting with another label. I just had a good, really good feeling about it. And they didn't—I don't know why because they didn't have nothing going on. Wow. So that's so interesting. You know, I, I'm in the midst of like a musical not renaissance but just I'm rethinking a lot of things I've like deeply held for a long time about genre about sound I listened to a bunch of things that you did in prep for this interview a bunch of other interviews you've done um, talking to, and you've talked to a number of times about Joey Joey Moy if you are unfamiliar <laughs> uh, like old Nickelback guy, boy <laughs> guy behind Nickelback and FGL two bands that have astounding levels of success and at the same time like take more shit than anyone yeah. um, and just kind of like trying to instead of join the pack pile on I think I'm taking more of a tack lately in life of being like why why is this connecting with everyone um, and and you've talked about how he has like a real just intuitive sense of what sounds good what doesn't sound good did you just trust that right off the bat? Do you have that same intuitive sense, just ability to lean in and be like, I like this. That's all that matters. I guess so. And, and uh, well, can't take all the credit, man. This is weird. My mom, again, come back to my mom. I love my mom. <laughs> Real star obviously. of this. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and, uh, dude, after I got off the voice or whatever, I think I had maybe just moved to Nashville, or I was about to move to Nashville. I couldn't name you one producer in Nashville at this point. My mom... Uh, calls me and is like, hey, I think I found who you need to work with. I was like, all right, you know, send me send me whatever, you know, send me who it is and send me about him or whatever. And she sends me Joey Moy. And she doesn't ever send me any other guy. This is the only guy she ever mentions. And 
so happens my first like label tryout or whatever is with Joey Moy in the room and I'm just kind of like this is weird this is very <laughs> very weird and I also you know I knew what he I knew what he had done but I also I don't know something about that that whole vibe in that room that day I just I felt like they there was a real realness to the situation and I felt like they really believed in me immediately and, and knew what had a vision mm-hmm. and we talked about that you know and I really I, as of now I think I made a good decision yes <laughs> I'm, I'm thankful for those guys and I, I, anytime I can give them a shout out I do that. And but yes I, 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 there was some of that but my mom also played a role in that that's <laughs> so too. interesting your mom uh, <laughs> she's a smart one she is man. so like I, I I'm intrigued I'm sure you've answered a million questions about your mullet. Um, I listened to an interview of yours in 2017, and it was right before Updown came out. And you said in it, uh, I, "I'm thinking about getting a mullet." Did I? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh wow, what a what a goldmine of like a, a quote." I was th- I'm thinking about it. It was right before. Uh, I used to have a huge beard, like down to here, big like fisherman's wharf mustache. And I would always tell people it was more about, like, the independence of it than, like, even it looking good. It doesn't look good to some people. It's a point of intrigue. Do you, like, does your mullet make you feel a certain kind of way? Yes, I wake up every day and I'm like, God, I got a mullet, you know? <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I mean, I don't think about that. Like, it's not, it's, I think it's like a kind of like a subconscious thing. But, yes, it's some sort of independence. That's a good way to put it. It makes, it makes me feel that way, you know? And plus, uh, you know, I... Do so you I, feel like it made a difference in your career? Yeah, <laughs> I, I would say it did. I had no idea that it would. It was definitely not some ploy because I I just thought it looked cool. I mean, was I, there pushback from anyone? Oh or? yeah, everybody. <laughs> this was definitely not like a label management like planned out thing. They were like, "What? You're gonna get a mullet?" And I was like, "Man, I saw my dad when he got married. My dad had a mullet when they, when my parents got married. Really? Yeah." I saw. I was looking through their photo albums and saw him, and I was like, "Man, he looks good." I mean, did you like, see yesterday at CRS Eric Church? I uh, was doing an interview up on stage, and he was saying that the label, under no circumstance, did they want the cover of Chief to have him in a hat and glasses. Really? Yeah, they were like, you have nice-looking eyes, so you have to show your eyes, and you have hair, so you have to show your hair. And he had to, like, fight them on that, which has now become kind of his iconic which, thing. Which, yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's funny how the stuff like that works, man. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get, like, my label, they know I'm going to do whatever I want. Okay. And so does my management. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, and I'm really appreciative that they give me that freedom. Um, obviously, I, I I trust their advice sometimes, and you know that kind of thing. Well, all the time, but they know that at the end of the day, if I don't really, if I want to do something, I'm probably going to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they didn't give me like a, they it wasn't like absolutely not. You know? okay. It was, okay. It was just like, come on, man, think about this stuff like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> And yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so like speaking of speaking of independence, speaking of freedom to do what you want, obviously you got like this song with Diplo out. Um, this whole project is kind of intriguing, what he's doing with yeah. Con- Tom- as Thomas Wesley. Who who approached who in this situation? And I don't think Diplo knew who I was when he approached my, my manager for this thing. This was originally their idea was not it was not me it was not this song I don't think he I don't think he was really aware you know I still was still pretty fresh I guess I'm, I mean I still am to an extent and um, he he had reached out and had a couple ideas I think one for Mason and one for <laughs> FGL I believe obviously I mean that that makes sense mm-hmm. and uh, and Seth my manager was like these are good ideas but I think I got one better mm-hmm. and sent him heartless and you know and said. What y'all think? And they're like, yeah, we like this one better too. So we ended up, that's just how it kind of how it happened. And, you know, for me, it was, I don't necessarily even look at the song as like a country song. I really don't. I never, I never thought that it would get played on country radio. I never thought anything like Does that. Does it? I think so. Some, uh, uh, yeah, some stations, it's not like we don't push for it to be played. That's not what we're promoting. Right. right. But yeah, I've, I've talked to a couple of radio guys who are like, man, we love this song. We're just going to play it. I'm like, well, I mean, by all means, go ahead, you know? But So do you like, at, at the end of the day, my channel, bunch of music nerds, bunch of people like thinking about it, bunch of people that self included that care about I mean, genre and yeah. think about it. Are you the same way? Are you? I mean, yeah, I watch your stuff, man, I, and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware of what people what people think, and I, I think I'm pretty a, a realist when it comes down to it. And man, I, I, I don't know. For me, I'm always going to make country music albums, 
when you if I put out an album, it's gonna be country music. But if you know if somebody like that approaches me and, and I get a chance to to go to a different audience and I, I, I didn't change one thing about my voice. Right, right. I, I didn't do anything. I'm different. not accusing no, you. No, 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 no. I okay. know you're not. No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't think you were. But um, you know, it's just like. I think that's a good thing for me because it gets it gives me a broader you know reach and it also I think it helps country music too I hope you know mm-hmm. it brings people in I've had I've had people all kinds of people message me and say I never heard of you until you heard, I heard Heartless and now I listen to your whole album yeah now I listen to other things now I listen to Jason Isbell yeah 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 exactly it's <laughs> yeah. funny how someone can go from listening to Diplo one day and the next week they're listening to me and Jason Isbell mm-hmm. and that's pretty cool yeah. for me I, I love that well I think that's where I I think that's where I. I'm finally kind of like drinking that same Kool-Aid. I'm sipping it. Um, I'm opening my mind to the idea that, yeah, maybe it is like more of a gateway. Um, that said, I'm all, <laughs> that's, just, that's just how I'm always going to be. That's okay. Thinking like the, oh, I know. Um, that like the, the distinctions matter. I think people just get pissed when things sound. I think like what you said at the very beginning. Ultimately, I know it's not really a country song. People just get pissed when you try to pull the wool over their eyes and say. See, that, I don't want to do that. Right. I, I agree. I agree that there are genres. I think that that you know, there's traditions and there's things that that should be honored and respected. And and, and I, I don't I don't want to ever, you know, muddy those waters. That's yeah. Not, that's not what I'm here to do. I just I would like to bring the more people I can bring into my favorite genre of music, the the better. Okay. So when like. You're in this like phase now where I feel like everything's really real. You're like you have this big album, you have this you're you're opening for Jason Aldean. You're I'm guessing gearing up for the next record. Like yeah, hardcore. Are you like doing okay? Has it been an adjustment? Do you have friends? Like <laughs> I feel like you your upbringing total like like if you're gonna be in like a church community, there's like certain rhythms of life. There's certain routine. There's people you're seeing every day. You're really like connected to others and the mundane things of like, oh, this, you know, this person's grandma died. Like that's real life. When you live out on the road, kind of apart from that, is it hard? Can be, yeah. Especially as much as we've been gone for, you know, I guess four years now, basically just nonstop. I mean, you know, we've had a couple weeks here and there, but mostly every week being gone. You know, sometimes being gone for a month or two at a time, whatever. Yeah, there's there's a there's an aspect of that that I miss mm-hmm. for sure. You know, I, I I miss birthday parties and all that kind of stuff. You know, and I hate that. But I also know that I'm doing something that not many people get to do. So I, I I'm super <laughs> super grateful for it. And I you know I stay in contact with my mom and my dad and my sisters. And I have a couple you know a couple of buddies back home. I've actually got one of my one of my buddies from high school out on the road with me this weekend. <laughs> So, I, you know, I just bring, I, I try to bring people along and, um, you know, FaceTime my buddies. And, I, and you know, that that's something that I've thought about, too. Like, man, if I if I ever lose that, how am I supposed to write a song? How am right. I supposed to connect with these people? Because if I ever become someone who's who's not that anymore, then it's gonna, probably going to be really hard for people to relate to anything that I have to say or do. And I don't want to do that. That's, that's a scary thought. Um, so I try to, I do try to keep a, a strong base of people in my life that, that help that. It's so fascinating to me how many country artists there are that like get off the road and go ranch. They, like they literally, I'm like, okay, on your break, your vacation is like you're going to farm. <laughs> yeah. But I imagine there's an element of that, of just like wanting to feel the normalcy, like the steadiness. I think, of, that's, I think that's exactly what it is. And, you know, for some of them, they may have been doing it before they mm-hmm. came out too. But yeah, there is something to that. And like, I like to fish. I like to do that a lot. So me and my me and my cousin, my cousin actually fishes in college. So he teaches me stuff all the time. And anytime I get a chance, me and him go fish, and that's something for me that that helps also. But there is something that that you that there's a. I mean, for me at least, I'm sure the others feel the same way that you just you don't want to lose who you are. Some video of mine, I didn't know what Zebco meant. <laughs> I got so trolled <laughs> by everyone, um, which I never claimed to be a country well, no, person. And that's but, okay. <laughs> but it, it was a, it was a, a, it was good to learn. It was good to learn what Zebco meant. I'm proud of um, you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so tell me about, tell me about. This is just a weird question. Two weird questions. One, uh, when you and Hardy were on WWE, this was a thing, right? Yes. I'm not making this up. No, no, no you're right. Were you just there? Did they coordinate it with you and be like, "We want to, we want to like show a little shot of you guys"? 
or yes they did um I mean, we were going to go anyway, I think, but somebody... Um, <laughs> is it like a thing you keep up with? No, not really. Okay. No, no. I'm, like, when I was younger, I kind of did, but no. It's who was your, not, who not was your guy? I, was, I never got, like, super okay. super into it. I didn't have, like... I, My brothers I, were I like, Stone Cold I like obsessive. Rick, yes, I like Stone Cold. I like Ric Flair, mm-hmm. of course. Um, but it was never something that I was like, man, like, all, I wasn't dressing up for <laughs> as it was Halloween, you know, or I didn't have no figurines or anything like that. I was just kind of like... This is weird, but it's kind of interesting at the same time. Like, people really, really, truly follow this, like, hardcore. Especially because it's like a soap opera. Yes. Yes. Kind of. It's like a For action sure. soap opera. It's like an unbelievable thing that they're able to do that, like, it's, week after week after week. And, dude, the process that they, 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 they do it is it, wild. They, like, write it the day of. They, they, they're, they, I went to, like, the camera room. This dude's, like... Like really? just rattling stuff off, dude. It's it's crazy. Like I'm, like, it's a whole huge production, and which is awesome. I, yeah. I appreciate that. So that was cool for me to get to see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, me and Hardy, we were we didn't originally we went and obviously they're gonna sit us beside each other. And right before before they were like, hey, we was like, man, I was like, man, we gotta we gotta do something. It's kind of like wrestling WWE or something. And I was like, how about we just <laughs> slap each other in the face? <laughs> he was like, yeah, let's do it. So he did, man. He slapped me so hard. I didn't slap. I did not slap him nearly as hard as he slapped me. That's that's great. It that um, kind of fits our our brand for sure. <laughs> what's the genesis of y'all's friendship? Yeah, about three years ago. Really? Uh, yeah, it's not a super long thing. Um, but man, it was, it was one of those things where we actually the first time we met was in a writers' room. Me, him, and Jameson Rogers actually was the first okay. time, and that's the first time I met J- Jameson too. And. Uh, they sent me that song that we wrote the first time the other day. It's not bad, but it's not great. But, um, <laughs> uh, man, you know, sometimes you just meet someone and you're like, I'm going to be this guy's friend for a long time. Or this girl, you know, I just, I don't know, man. We just had a connection. And this is before Hardy even, I, I think, even thought about being an artist or anything. It was mm-hmm, just when he was, mm-hmm. That's when he was Michael. <laughs> yes. I always called him Hardy, but that ended up being his name, but. For his, you know, Michael Hardy. Well, when I did a video on him, I remember, like, that was my aha moment. So I was like, oh, I bet there's random videos of him as Michael Hardy. Yeah, I'm and, sure there is. Oh, much easier to much easier to find than just, like, the word Hardy. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. It was a treasure trove. But I bet it was, dude. <laughs> but, man, I don't know. Something about, I don't know, our God, man, if I had to guess, put us together that day. And, and man, we've just been, we've been boys ever since. Yeah. That's, uh, and I love him. I love him like family now. I love his family. We've kind of just, we kind of dove in, man, <laughs> to the friendship. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, like I was just saying, I'm guessing you need that. Like, Yes. I, I hold his friendship very dear because he sees things kind of a little bit on the same page as me, if that makes sense. Like, we both go through a lot of the same things. And everybody back home can't always relate to everything that I have to say either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't bother them with things that they're they're not going to understand. Mm-hmm. But somewhere like Hardy, I can... You know, he gets it. So I, I value that a lot. Well, and I feel like y'all get on, uh, like, something I kind of enjoy about both of y'all. And maybe you just have good social media managers, maybe whatever. But I feel like you just kind of get it. Like, you get the shifts that are happening in media. I'm not trying to get you to say anything bad about country radio. Um, <laughs> I'm just getting like I'm no, not going to. <laughs> okay, yeah. I always feel like that's, you know, the <laughs> the umbrella that everyone in the country world We're lives under. under. <laughs> but, like... Uh, but I just feel like there's a different sense of kind of leaning into, you know, I think like respecting the past, evolving it forward, and doing that in kind of the internet culture. Yeah, and I, and we do have great people behind the scenes that help a lot, you know. But yeah, I think that they everything that I I never I know everything that I do I approve and or, or I or I come I come up with all my content. Mm-hmm. Somebody just basically all my content for my for like Instagram stuff and. I know I have a TikTok now. I, I I do the content. Wait, you have a TikTok? I now? do the con. I do the content, but I don't actually have TikTok. So I like my photographer guy. We'll okay. we'll do the stuff and then send it to them and they'll post it. But I don't actually like have TikTok because I'm like I already spend too much time on this other shit. <laughs> I don't need another. I don't need another Instagram. I've Dude, already got I one. would. Uh, so every country artist right now is getting a TikTok and they're horrible. They're like amazing and horrible. Um, like Luke Bryan just started his. Basically, what everyone does is they make three. Because um, I think you have to like make three of them to get verified. You have to make three tick three videos. Yeah, okay. and so they'll be like, "Hi, I'm on TikTok," and then they'll be like, "What's up, guys?" And then they'll just do one more that's that much effort, and then they get their little check mark, and then after that, it's just like concert clips <laughs> that are like professionally put up because they got the blue check mark already. That's it. 
Well, that's. I mean, that's cool. I'm trying to observe. I'm trying to like figure out what is that. What are all the big country artists going to do with TikTok? And I'm just enjoying watching it right now. Uh, George Strait just got on there the other day. Oh, uh, Brian's <laughs> on there now. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. It's evolving. Okay. Good. I don't know what to do with TikTok I'm, yet. I'm going on. Well, I'm on tour with Jason now. I'm going on tour with Luke Brown this summer. I, maybe me and him can. We'll, we'll try to step up. Dude, right, help each. Up yeah, help each other get your TikTok game better. <laughs> um, and then here's the last question that is completely random. Right. In the Chase and You video, there's one clip. Do you know what I'm going to ask about? <laughs> Probably. Is there was that a mannequin in the back of the car? No, I don't know what happened. Dude. This is a pretty girl, dude. <laughs> I know. I don't know what happened. I was in that like, shot. I can't imagine they got such a close matching mannequin, dude. I, everybody, not everybody, but people that pay attention like you, they is there a dead girl in the back of the back <laughs> yes. of the car? No, she was alive, breathed. She left the video fine. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Someone DM me at some point. And I'm sure, and I don't like, know why I didn't. I, if I would have caught that in, in the in the you know like the editing part, I might have been like, maybe let's keep the dead looking girl out of the, out of this shot. But someone DM me and was like, I think it's saying like this girl's like a memory, and he's like chasing her. I wish that I would have thought of that. <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. No, it was not that. If, if that was a thing, it would have probably been a little bit longer than just yes. a little. <laughs> I've probably put that clip in. So like a hundred different things. Um, I love that that <laughs> shot exists, dude. I don't I don't know where it came from, but I'm glad there's a little a little gold in that. A little tease moving forward. Like this bar had a lyric video come out today. Yeah, is that a single? Man, I, every bit of data that we get back from it suggests that it is. Okay. That being said, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm still just chilling with chasing you right now. It's it's doing well and still climbing. So whenever. There's a good chance that this bar is probably a single. There's a good chance of it, but I'm, I'm working on I'm working on an album right now. I'm basically, when I'm not on the road, I'm in the studio working on that um, every day up until May 8th is when I have to be doing. So that's how that works. They tell you you have like a deadline. Well, to get done? the last time was not like this, but this this time I'm getting some much bigger looks, media wise and, and DSP wise and all that kind of thing. So I'm. I'm going to... What's DSP? Digital streaming platform, sorry. Oh, so they're so basically they're trying to block out their marketing calendar for the year. For me, yes. So that's great. They put me on a time crunch. That's okay, because I'm, I'm, we have plenty of songs. Mm-hmm. We just went through the other day and picked the album that, um, right before we came out on the road Wednesday. I was in the studio cutting, um, you know, cutting the new songs with the band. And, um, I'm really excited about it, man. I, I, I'm really, really excited about you it. You got something that, like... Like you're ready to say with this record, or you're you feel like early in my career, I'm trying to build, I'm trying to build like a canon of songs that people enjoy at a baseline. You know, I'm not sure because there's, we're, we're, I'm not sure exactly what this album's even going to look like because we're throwing around a bunch of ideas because I've got <laughs> a bunch of songs that I want to get out. Yes, there may be there may be something that that, that is said like something like that. If, if if the idea that I personally want to happen. You know, happens that we're gonna, and it's just, it's just something that people don't really do anymore. So I, I, that's all. I, that's all I'm gonna really say. But yeah, yeah. it's I, I'm excited either way, man. I'm really, really pumped about it. Well, that's cool. Well, I, uh, I have to let you go at some point. Could ask <laughs> you a bunch of questions about Jason Isbell and. Uh, oh, you can talk a little bit longer if you want. Let's do a little. Let's do a tiny bit, just because right. I'm like, I want to. I want to talk to you about Eric Church and Jason Isbell right, because cool. that's, you know that's when you I were talking talk when you were talking just now, like when you were talking just now, you. I would say, like, Dirks and Eric Church are, in my mind, the two guys that have best managed to throw, a, like, enough bones to, like, this is an obvious mainstream play with, like, this is what I want to do. This is my little, like, nerdy passion, whether it's a bluegrass project, whether it's something like The Outsiders that, that Eric Church did. And, like, that's a hard line to walk smartly. Um, and you were kind of, it, it, like, would you say that, Eric's model, because I know he, you're a fan of his, is something that like you'd want to emulate. Yes, um, I mean, B right now I don't have like a like you said a bluegrass thing or like a rock right. thing, you know, like Eric does. Um, but I, I I always want to do stuff that I I enjoy and and you know for the I mean, man, yeah, I I, I would like to think that I can put my things out there for the mainstream and then do what I want on the albums. That's what I, that's that's kind of what I've always wanted to do mm-hmm. from the beginning, and and um, I would agree with you. Dirks and Eric are, are the ones that that 
I mean, I'm trying to think of anyone else who even actually does that. Does anybody else even do it, really? I think some people do. They just, like, don't – they're not as successful at it. I think a ton of people find a degree of success, find some money, some comfort, and then go and do what they want. And Okay, yes. And, but no, like, I was just trying to think if there's anybody else who's done it, like, successfully. I, 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 it's hard to do. Um it is, man, and, and and you know that's a I guess that's a scary thought. I don't know what that noise was, but I think there's some water water pipes going on in here. But um, it's you know you, you uh, obviously you want to have success. This is right. I need to. I mean, this is my way of living. I don't have another plan for my life, so this is what I, I you know it's, this is what I want to do, and that's what I'm gonna do. I mean, <laughs> but best quote I ever got in my time as a as a writer was I was premiering Dirks's video for Riser. He was real passionate about that song, and he said something to the effect of, he was like, look, did I think that this song, <laughs> I think it's the, you know what it sounds like, is it sounds like the uh, automatic paper towel dispenser. That's what, that's what it sounds like, why did it be going off? <laughs> but Dirk said that, uh, like, I didn't think Riser would be in the 40s a few months into its release, but look, if this song doesn't end up being a hit, I'll just release Drunk on a Boat. Which he basically did. He put out somewhere on a beach, like right after that song didn't hit. And I've always appreciated just like the straightforwardness of like, look, you got to keep having hits. You got to matter till you don't. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, and I get that, dude. I, I, I like I said earlier. I, I, I think I'm I'm pretty realistic with how with how life works. And okay, man, give I, me your most underrated Eric Church song. Most underrated, Dark Side. Dark Side. Love that song. I would say Knives of New Orleans. Love that song too. I love every Eric Church song, but. Literally every song. There's not a song that I would... Do you ever put mustard on your fries? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Well, I find it his most offensive lyric. Um, Because you like ketchup. Well, who doesn't? I mean, I love ketchup on fries, too. Anything other than mustard. But I'm not... I don't feel like I'm, like... I don't know... Blaspheming the fries for putting. I just feel like it's me. not this like all American thing to put mustard on your fries. It's, not, it's definitely. I'm a huge fan of him. I have I commissioned a whole painting of Eric Church. It's in my office, but um, I just yeah, that's all. I mean, if, if I had to pick one, I'm picking ketchup. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank Is you. That fair? That's very fair, and I appreciate your <laughs> candor. Um, all right, your cover of "Cover Me Up" probably like for a lot of people on on my channel, definitely like a place where they discovered you or a place where they rediscovered you after like maybe not caring about like your your first releases i think it's made a lot of people like take a second look what <laughs> we're just gonna ignore it <laughs> whatever um like what what we'll was the beat to that <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounds like uh <laughs> there's a remix of i knew you were trouble with screaming goats uh that that kind of sounds like on the cold, hard <laughs> you, you like the song just tell me how it, how it came to be and what it's kind of done for you yeah, man, I, I've always loved the song since I heard it. That's the first Jason Isbell song I heard, mm-hmm. and um, man, I just I don't know. I fell in love with it. Something about it just kind of struck a chord with me, and I, and I think some of it is partially because my my parents' story. My dad used to be real, real wild when when they were young. My parents have known each other for since they were kids, you know, and um, he was real wild, just not making good decisions, you know, and. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was like, uh, you know, get yourself together or, or I'm leaving. And he did. And that song mm-hmm. kind of just, I don't know, kind of was like, I don't know, like I thought of that when I, when I heard that well, song. Well, it's a song about like a woman being able to see the diamond in the rough, to see the potential, that like you're not being your best self. Yeah. Um, and there's like a certain, there's a certain type of person that finds that like the most romantic thing. Um I, I, mean, I love that song. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, like a, no, no. It makes me, sense. Me too. So I think that I thought of that, you know, when I heard the song originally and, and I just started learning, learning the song. And then me and my guitar player, Dominic, um, we would always be like, like in a room like this or, or whatever. A lot of times backstage, the doors are open and, you know, everybody can kind of just hear what you're doing. And me and him would warm up and sing that song and people would peek their head in and be like, what is that? Mm-hmm. And then I'd notice more and, people, more and more people like, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? And I was like, man, people really like to hear us sing this, you know, and, and, and they don't know the song, so that sucks. That's sad that they don't know it. And I, I don't know, man. We just decided to do a version of it ourselves. And um, I mean, it wasn't like immediate. Like I went and did on, I went on Taste of Country and did a, a thing. They had me right. as one of their risers, and right. I, I picked that from a cover song. And, and then I saw how well that did, and I was right. like, well... You know, maybe we can do a version. You know, I didn't, at first I was kind of skeptical about it, but man, I, we ended up doing it, and obviously, 
the the response has been overwhelmingly positive to me, and obviously there's going to be some of the purists or whatever you, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. want to call them, and I get that. I, I respect that, and I know that I don't try to to make my version. I did, I tried not to stray far from the original, um, and and you know I, I get it that they're going. Oh, Jason Isbell wrote the song. He did. He's a great songwriter. One of my one of my favorites. And uh, I, I, I've tried to give him the respect he deserves every single step of the way. Did you have to ask him, like, up front to do it? Or? No, no, because it's just public domain, and I didn't really know how to. I didn't really know that how. That song's public domain? I think all songs, every song that comes out, you can cover it. Oh, interesting. Um, have you all, like, talked? Yes, we have now. <laughs> okay. And, um, he, actually, he actually... I mean, I've seen what he's tweeted, just being like, guys, <laughs> I'm happy about this. Yeah, and I, I mean, why wouldn't he? I, I, I mean, I, obviously, if I just destroyed the song or right, something, then right. he would be like, "God, this kid sucks," you know. But I tried, I tried my hardest to, to respect the song and to <laughs> not stray, you know, too far from the original. Um, oh, I saw it was af, it was at the CMT Awards, and he was there. Him, him, and Amanda were there, and we we had, it was right after the. CMT Best New Artist got announced, and I didn't win, and I'm pissed. Obviously, you want to win. Anything you're up for, you want to win. I, 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 like, I don't – the next day, I'm over it. Yeah. I, that, that's not what makes people come buy tickets. Right. Winning those awards. Um, so, but I'm pissed, and I walk out. My manager's like, we can't leave you. I'm like, I'm leaving, dude. So I walk out and leave, and, and, uh, and I look at – they're sitting, like, right next to Jake Owen, I think, and I'm like – I said, like, F this or something like that to him. <laughs> and I think – I didn't realize Jason and Amanda were sitting like that because I know Jake. Yeah. And I didn't realize Jason and Amanda were sitting there. I think she saw me say that, and she followed me out to the hallway. And I was like, hey. Like, she was, you know, just, like, real calm. She knew that I'm mad. She's like, I think I got I – want, I want you to meet somebody. I'm like, is it your husband, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And uh, I met him, and he was just, like, he was so gracious. They were both so gracious. And – Approve, approving, you know, of what I'm doing, and that that really meant a lot to me. Sweet. Well, that's a nice, like, you know, bridge building thing to end on. I'd say. I would and, say uh, so too. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this. I've enjoyed it, man. Well, good. Yeah. Um, bye. Yeah. Thank y'all for listening. <laughs> All right.